Hi, Mitch Bailey here. A lot of times when I got the job and I'm looking at it and I look at the unit and I'll say, yeah, this is a three ton unit. And the customer will, you know, in their brain, they're thinking three tons, that's 6,000 pound unit. That's not what we refer to. So we use in our industry a lot of acronyms and we use a lot of other terms that, that are unfamiliar to people. So I'm going to explain real quick what tonnage is and uh, what a BTU is because that's BTUs and tonnage are all interrelated and it's actually pretty interesting so follow along please and if you do like this please like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video so ahead of time thanks for watching So a BTU is defined as the amount of heat that's required to raise or lower the temperature of one pound of water, one degree Fahrenheit, which is approximately 16 ounces by one degree Fahrenheit. Okay. So as an example, if you take a large wooden match and you burn it all the way down, large kitchen wooden match, and you burn it down to the nub, that is the equivalent of one BTU. Okay. So it, furthermore, if you take one pound of water at 32 degrees and you freeze it, it will take 144 BTUs to make this change of state. The same holds true if you melt one pound of ice at 32 degrees, it will take 144 BTUs to make this change of state. So in both cases, the water or the ice is at 32 degrees and is changing phase from either a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid when still at the 32 degrees. The temperature did not change, only the state of the matter it went from ice to water or water to ice. Air conditioners are rated in BTUs. So a three ton air conditioner that absorbs 36,000 BTUs of heat from the air in the home and it rejects that heat outside. So simply put, air conditioners do not cool the air. They remove the heat from the air, making it less hot. This is actually a very important concept in physics. It is the first law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot neither be created or destroyed, only altered in form. Tonnage is based on the energy that's needed to freeze or melt a ton of ice. For example, if you take 144 BTUs times 2,000 pounds of H2O, which equals 288,000 BTUs. Now, if you divide that by 24 hours, you're going to get 12,000 BTUs per hour. So one ton of cooling is equal to 12,000 BTUs per hour. Three ton unit, that produces 36,000 BTUs per hour. Same as a four ton would produce 48,000 BTUs per hour. In both these examples, we took 32 degree ice or 32 degree water and changed it from a liquid to a solid or solid to liquid, this took 144 BTUs. So to review, they took a ton of ice or a ton of water and they froze it or they melted it, one of the two, and it takes 144 BTUs to make that change of state. They then multiplied it by the 2,000 pounds, the one ton, and that came out with 288,000 BTUs. They divided that by 24 hours, which gave them 12,000 BTUs per hour. So they could now equate a unit that makes uh, 36,000 BTUs is a three ton unit. Three times 12, 36. Four times 12, 48, 48,000. So four ton would be 48,000 BTUs. Now, the size of the equipment depends on the load that the house has, how much heat is coming in we have to remove that heat. Remember how we said that it takes heat from inside the house and it puts it outside. It removes heat. It does not add cool. So we have to have a unit that's sized that'll take that heat from out inside the house and put it outside. We're going to give you a unit that's big enough to take that heat out. Now, if you wanna, my analogy that I use all the time with homeowners is, it, think of your house as a boat and it leaks water and the water is the heat. I'm going to give you a bucket to bail out that water or heat as it comes in. 
So we don't want to give you too big a bucket because I give you too big a bucket. You bell it out very quickly, but it takes a lot of energy because it's a big bucket. If you give you too small a bucket, you never keep up and the house will get warmer and warmer. It'll fill up with heat. So we want to size it correctly. This also means that you have to run it correctly. Air conditioners today are designed that you turn them on when you know it's going to be 100 plus degree weather, that you turn on early in the morning, set it to the temperature you want, and just leave it. That will give you the best efficiency and the best capacity, and it won't allow the house to fill up. Imagine this. You go uh, away for the day. You're not there. You turn your unit off. It's going to be 105 outside. And you get home. Now it's 85, 90 in the house. I turn the AC on, and it takes it hours to catch up. Why? Because the unit was sized to keep up with what's coming in. But if it's already filled up, that's got to work all the time, and it'll take it hours to catch up. So do yourself a favor, turn your unit on early on in the morning if you know it, close all your drapes and blinds to make sure that you keep the house as cool as possible. Do other things like don't do cooking in the middle of the day or you know uh, laundry and stuff like that. I know they want you to do that for the because California has all the solar power during the day, but you shouldn't do laundry or do that stuff in the day because that adds heat to the house. Wait till at night when it's a lot cooler and then you can do that. And, and don't use your oven or your stovetop. Use your microwave or have cold cuts that day. You can make your energy uh, more efficient and stuff. But a ton of cooling is 12,000 BTUs per hour. A BTU is how much energy it takes to raise or lower one pound of water, one degree Fahrenheit. I hope this was educational. And please like and subscribe again. Thanks for watching.